Welcome back to Turkey Trip in 2022. In case you can't tell, I'm back in Missouri at Bart's place. So yesterday I got done with Arkansas. I say done, more like fed up with Arkansas. It was a ghost town down there as far as turkeys go. Pretty frustrating there. I couldn't get to where I was going, blah, blah, blah. I belly ached about that enough. Roads closed, gates closed. But anywho, so I started doing some looking at um, the research on turkey numbers in Arkansas, looking at the AFGC website and bouncing it off of the Missouri website. What I thought was interesting and potentially alarming, I guess, was that Arkansas's harvest rate for turkeys is 20-25% of Missouri's. I find that very interesting and quite a contrast considering they share a common border, Missouri's southern border and Arkansas's northern border. I also find it very interesting because of the terrain I was in. It's very similar to Missouri. I mean, they, they, like I said, they share a common border. They're not that far apart. Some of the areas I was in looked beautiful. Look like great turkey habitat, you know, where there's lots of hardwoods. I mean, just like here, I mean, we got all these oaks right here. But I was going places and I'd find acorns all over the ground. And I thought that interesting because nothing was eating them. The deer and the turkeys weren't eating them. Well, I didn't find any scratch or anything like that. And deer were everywhere. I was bumping deer all the over, all over the place. So there's not a deer population problem, but there's definitely a turkey population problem. Hopefully they can get that sorted out. That's that's certainly not an overnight solution and there's pro it's probably going to have to be a multi-pronged, multifaceted solution, a solution. But while I was there, I like I showed, I, I contributed to uh, some research projects in Missouri and Kentucky with, uh, with RGO stuff. So you guys that watch on YouTube, those proceeds went to Arkansas or uh, Missouri and Kentucky research. Arkansas should be able to glean some information off of Georgia's research and uh, Missouri's research considering how close they are in proximity and hopefully can kind of determine some steps to get their populations back up. The the boom of 20 years ago isn't a a a thing for the future. It's, you know that's not going to happen again. But it could it certainly should be better than it is right now. I mean I was in some places and there was just no sign. When you go a mile on a muddy road and you don't see any sign, any turkey track crossing it, that that seems like uh, bad numbers to me. So anywho, we're here in Missouri. I'm gonna hunt tomorrow. Now that my week has gone up, I can hunt again tomorrow. And so I'll probably hunt tomorrow and the morning on Tuesday. After Tuesday, I gotta move to my next place to go. We'll talk about that later. But uh, I don't wanna hunt on the spot. I, I got one last week. There's traffic going by. In case there's a problem or, uh, you know, concern about numbers I don't want to take them off of one spot so I may have to adjust my area a little bit go into a new place or something and just and try that out but I'm going to try to hear something tonight and then that'll determine whether I go back to that spot or maybe go check out a new spot just because you don't hear anything at night doesn't mean you won't hear anything in the morning that's that's a for sure fact so hopefully we can hear something tonight have a place to start in the morning good morning folks I'm on a piece of public that I deer hunted on a couple years ago, just one time. It's not that wide, but it's pretty long. And I've got a gobble out in this direction, which I think is north. And maybe it's east. Looks like the sun's coming up over there. In any event, we've got a gobble back that way for sure. I thought I was hearing something, and then I heard something that made me sound like I gotta go investigate. Started moving, went about a hundred yards, heard an owl stop moving, gobble, and the direction of it sounded like he's on public. So we're gonna get back in here give this a whirl hopefully we got enough time 
before he wants to fly down to get over there. As the crow flies, I've covered over 600 yards and he doesn't sound any closer. That one's a little closer, but he's on private. So there's one over there. One over there. Alright, that joker's on the wrong side of the fence over here. There he is right there. Man, he's hammering. Get in here a ways on the other side of the fence. See if maybe he'll come over. There's a hen. Not too far over on the other side of the fence. Which is in line with where the gobbler was. have really disappeared. I don't know how long ago I have since I've had or not heard anything, maybe if as much as a half hour. But I definitely just heard a gobble this way and I've got almost 0.6 miles, so just over half a mile to work with. We're going that direction. He just gobbled on his own, so I like that. I got over here and I've called. Got nothing. This is a nice little open area here, but it's bigger right on the other side of this ridge. But now that I've already called, I don't want to move yet in case he's moving silently. I've got two jigs on my right. At about 45 yards. Jake would almost be a legal bird in Mississippi. I tell you what, my gun was way out of position if that was a long beard. It's been pretty quiet since I saw those jakes. Nothing's happened at all. So I've been just walking and calling. And I about stepped on this guy. And it scared the crap out of me. It's about one of the fattest ones of these guys I've seen so far.
don't advise getting that close to snakes and in general just give wildlife a wide berth. So I got here and I was just going to start working my way back in because it is still pretty early. It's probably 10 or 15 minutes before legal time and uh, I swear I just heard a gobble. Boy, this, the moon and I think that's a planet to the left. Real pretty this morning, but it's pretty cold this morning. The weather says 38, but I stopped on a place and there was frost on the ground. So it's pretty chilly. Let's see what we get into here this last morning. I sure hope I don't hear one back toward the car though. Well, actually, maybe I do because anything back toward the car is on public. It actually gets pretty wide back there. It gets narrower in the direction I'm going. All right, definitely a gobble that I heard earlier. So we're gonna pick up our pace a little bit, get back in there. Got an interesting development. Sounds like a pair of them in this direction down here that I know you can't see. Man, there sounds like there's one out way out there. It sounds like two over there. That one's on private way over there. That sounds like Jake's over there to me. It's multiple birds. Decisions are easy when there's one bird. And those multiple birds might not be on my side of the river. Dang, I can hear a far one. Jake's over there. It sounds like three birds. And there's a bunch of birds back here. They're in different directions. I just bumped a bird off the tree. Look like a hen. I didn't see a beard in the silhouette. I'm literally listening to seven, eight different birds, but they almost all sound like they're across the river. I'm kind of just in a stupor as to what decision I should make. I just feel like those multiple birds over there are Jake's. It really shut down this morning. So I just simply got in the back. I've got a decoy out down here. Got a little piece of burlap blocking the sun. Gonna gobble out in that direction. Pretty far out, real far out. But I hit him with the box call. A couple minutes later he gobbled again. So we'll see if anything develops off of that. He might not be on the public though. It does end up in there. Well, this is gonna wrap up Missouri round two here on this second morning. I think if I had a mulligan this morning, I would have gone after what I thought were Jake's. Could have been a long beard in that bunch. And they were the closest ones but because I thought they were Jake's and they were on the other side of the river, I decided not to and went after a longer one that uh, was not across the river. But turns out he didn't want to play that much either. 
And then when they shut down before I got really far back there, everybody shut down. So I don't know if they kind of flew down a little early or what, but I'm just going to wrap this up, get back to Bart's, pack up and move on. Hope you liked this video. If you did, give us that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down there. And as always, thanks for watching. Even though I haven't hardly seen a turkey in over a week. Well, I guess a week today. Coming up empty handed and not even playing the game is kind of the gamble you take when you play the private public boundary fence game. But now it's time to move on to Iowa. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down there, especially the 82% of you who watch this but are not subscribed. Hit that subscribe button down there. And as always, thanks for watching.